Hey guys, so you are listening to Alex Callan on Matter of Faction, and today we have New South Wales based multi instrumentalist Neil Foley talking about his project Old Horns. How's it going, Neil? Very well, thanks, mate. So you've literally just released the scene, um, your newest single for Old Horns. Uh, I suppose, what can you tell me about it? Ah, uh, yeah. So very excited to finally get this thing out. Um, I've been working on it for on and off for about three or four years now. Just one of those songs that wow. kept kept morphing, you know. Um, so I finally landed on yeah, in the way it is now, and yeah, um, sort of started writing it um, around the same time I released the other songs. But um, yeah, this one just needed a little bit more TLC to get it over the line. So yeah, is there? Finally there. I suppose a reason why you kind of wanted to focus more on this one as opposed to the other singles which were released in 2020. Yeah, I feel like um, the singles in 2020 were kind of where I was just sort of figuring out um, my sound. Um, I've always had like a a particular way I like to write and and sounds I like to use. But when I did the old haunts project, it was um, yeah a lot of uh, figuring out exactly what I wanted it to be, and then. Once I did the first three, I felt like the scene it had like a really great hook in the chorus. Like it's, it's an earworm. So I wanted to give it a little bit more attention and, and really focus on getting the sounds right. And I think that's just what happened. And then I was never quite satisfied the way it was sort of coming out until, yeah, um, very recently. And that's why I decided to get it out there. And I mean, as you should have, it's an absolute triumph of a track. And, you know, especially Thanks, kind of knowing that it comes predominantly from the mind of one person is absolutely incredible um i suppose in Jeez. particular where you kind of touch on you know still finding your sound because i know a lot of the early singles were slightly more like progressive in certain ways i mean like the genre um yeah. or not actually progressive but um sure, yeah yeah like like i feel um the scene is equally as progressive if we're using the actual definition of the word um right but i feel as if the scene's slightly more stripped back where you kind of go for some like high epic guitar licks instead of i suppose like the mental gen riffs um yes and it does kind of feel a little bit more stripped back so i suppose when you were kind of adding that tlc as you said um was that kind of some of the aspects that you you know did experiment with like instead of one-upping it kind of stripping it back and and seeing what worked better absolutely man you you nailed it because i feel like you know like any musician will tell you they feel like the more complicated you make something the better it is and mm. as i've grown as a songwriter i've realized it's not the case at all so um yeah you're right man like i did i sort of stripped it back and then found that sort of sound and identity through yeah through exactly what you're saying yeah i appreciate that man <laughs> no no well, um, yeah, yeah it's always good uh, being right i guess um yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. when you say these like statements you kind of look at an artist and they're like man, that's not at all what happened. Um, so I suppose it is nice that we're on the same wavelength there. But yeah, I, I kind of felt like it was really nice um, to, I suppose, let the subtleties carry it, especially for a song that is so vulnerable because, you know, we'll play uh, the scene after this interview for the listeners that haven't heard it. And I feel for most of those listeners that may, you know, be discovering it for the first time, they'll probably think it's about the metal scene. Um, which I feel is kind of how it's constructed in a sense, but it's actually about the struggles of addiction and anxiety. So I suppose, how can you, what can you tell me about the song's lyrical themes? Yeah. So it, thanks for it again. And it is a, um, it's a complicated sort of uh, thing to talk about, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I've had addiction struggles throughout the years and um, I feel like, yeah, this song was kind of like, it wasn't just the lyric content that kind of was telling the story. Like um, the, the, the music kind of carries it as well. And you kind oh. of, even in the, um, there's like a, a heavy section in right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like representative of like, um, yeah, not, not trying to sound, you know, egotistical or anything like that, but it's more like it's representative of where your mind can take you when you're say in, when you're withdrawing or you're having, you know, you're mm -hmm. fighting, fighting against the addiction and, so yeah, aside from the lyrics, the music sort of carried that as well, but um, it was kind of when, and I'm sure anybody that has been through a similar sort of situation, like you get pretty dark when you're um, sort of battling with it. And 
so I guess like the lyrics were sort of like um it was kind of hard for me to explain but it's uh where you take yourself through um yeah the highs and lows mainly lows when you're in it um but then sort of like in the in the chorus where it hits and says um not everything's worth saving in like the things that you hang on to um that aren't don't benefit you in any way that all they do is sort of hold you back and I think that's what I wanted to kind of like as much as like as somber as a song can sound like that line there is sort of you know just learn how to let go of things um and one of them being addiction that does not serve any any purpose so yeah why am I hanging on to it so that's basically what that is about um sorry if I'm sort of scattered it, it is kind no. of still <laughs> still confusing for myself but yeah no not at um, all I was um yeah. I was just honed in there. I was, you know, really <laughs> by that answer. And I suppose, especially, you know, I find it interesting how you kind of touched on, it does follow, I suppose, slightly a cinematic feel um, where the music in a sense soundtracks the lyrics. And, you know, I actually took note of that section that you mentioned in the middle where it does get quite hectic and frantic. And, you know, I suppose in the narrative of the story with addiction, it is kind of, as you said, where, you know, things build up almost immediately and it just feels like it's crashing in on you and I suppose I like how it comes back to the chorus where you know you bring it back with not everything's worth saving and you know it's almost like okay I've, I've hit like a stepping stone and I'm I'm freaking out a little bit but no I've, I've realized like I'm still good with this I can still move forward and you know get to a better place which I think is a really impressive narrative structure to use. Thank you, man. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I suppose is that, I mean, there's certain lyrical topics that writers will kind of touch on and go, I haven't finished talking about this. And then there's other times that, you know, as soon as they finish writing the song, they go, this is my full stop. I mean, I'll put my thoughts out there. So I suppose the scene yeah. for you, is it more so opening up kind of, an area of lyrics and themes that you do want to dive deeper into, or is it kind of you saying, you know, that was a point in my life. Here's, here's the end of it. And then I'm kind of going to do what else. Yeah, no, um, I'd say it is more, I'm opening up the conversation. Um, mm. it, yeah, it's one of those things where it, it can take quite a while to even like talk openly about addiction and stuff like that. So I feel like, yeah, yeah. I'm just sort of using it as an outlet to, um, sort of get the conversation happening it's the more i sort of do open up this conversation through song whatever it might be uh the more common i i find that it is like you know like there's so many people having the exact same thing and um everyone's just kind of you know keeping it to themselves and yeah i feel like we need to talk about it more so yeah definitely i'll be delving further into this for sure absolutely and yeah you know, I mean, it is something that so many people kind of go through, in particular the last couple of years with lockdowns and things like that. I know I've kind of bumped into certain people and it's like, gee, those those two years have been hard for you or you've kind of gone like a, a different route in that time. And um, I suppose opening up the conversation is, you know, really important, as you said, and, you know, to be at the forefront of that and put yourself in such a vulnerable position that it's like, I'm going to open it up. And if people want to talk to me about it, I'm here. Like, you know, that's a... yeah pretty powerful spot to put yourself in yeah it is it's kind of scary too but yeah. um but i've even found um yeah since since i released it i've had multiple people um contact me to talk about it so uh, i'd say that's i'm yeah it's, i'm winning at the moment it's definitely what i wanted to achieve and it's yeah, it's it's happening so yeah i mean and that that for itself i mean as feedback for a new single is pretty incredible i mean it shows people a not just listening to the song. I mean, they're really listening to the song enough to, you know, come up with their own thoughts and then come back to you and, and kind of have that discussion, which for a songwriter, yeah. that's so powerful. That is, it's massive. Yeah. So, yeah, I suppose with, you know, everything going on, um, with the scene being the first single in a couple of years and, you know, as you kind of touched on, Neil, opening up that conversation and it being a topic that you would like to write in on more, is there newer music coming out? I mean, can we expect the scene to be like the start of an EP or something like that? Yeah, it's first of many, absolutely. Yep. Um, I, I think after after released the last three singles back in 2020, um, yeah, I went on a 
really deep dive on writing and um yeah i've got a bunch of songs and yeah definitely will be bringing out a lot more um and Unreal. yeah yeah i'm pretty excited about it it's just the you know with all covid and everything that happened it gave me a lot of time to to focus on it and um yeah during the lockdowns and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and then we my partner and i threw another baby into the work so that sort of put a little bit of a damper on it but um yeah, yeah. Starting to get some freedom back again, so it's yeah, really um, full steam ahead from now. Well, yeah, I suppose for starters, I mean that's that's incredible news and that's really exciting. But I kind of got a bit sidetracked. Congratulations on the second child. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe you just put in a sentence. We had another baby, and that put a dampener on it. I feel <laughs> our kids gonna grow up and watch this interview and be like, "Dad, what the fuck?" Kind yeah, of yeah, it's a, it's a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's it's cool to know that you are working on new music. So I suppose yeah. with you being based in New South Wales, the faction being based in Brisbane, and me being based down in Melbourne, um, can we expect to see old haunts, you know, on the road sometime soon? That's the plan. Um, yeah. So just uh, throwing it all together, and um, uh, yeah, man, I'm very excited about it. So that's unreal next on the list yeah <laughs> so have you are you currently like in the process of kind of sorting out a band to yep. perform yeah exactly um mm -hmm. it's been yeah the finding people that are um sort of suited to this genre and people that have the time and are willing to to do it is um uh will be the challenge but mm -hmm. i'm sure there's you know there'll be people that i can find i can lean on and um I, I used to i've played a lot of music with my brother over the years he um he kind of, he has quite a bit to do with my writing process and yeah, he's a bass player. So, um, that's one member already. So yeah. then, um, yeah, just got a, yeah, sort of drummer and a, another guitarist and whatnot. Well, yeah. I know I've actually interviewed, um, interviewed a couple of multi-instrumentalists from Sydney. Like I spoke to Josh Munkey recently from Sugar Spine. Um, right. And it seems like there's a few of you guys in the same boat um, looking yeah. for other musicians to kind of perform in a band. So I'm going to pitch the idea of making a super group from New South Wales and just Love all it. the Aussie <laughs> instrumentalists. Um, I Great, think man. Incredible. But yeah, it's been one of those things where if we, uh, I mean, like I, I like the the idea of being able to write on my own and, and um, do exactly the way I want it to. But that obviously Absolutely. it comes with downfalls, you know, if you're working with a band, you've got a band already, but so yeah. it's just one of the things we have to tackle, but not a problem. Well, I'm sure it's, um, it'll all come to fruition. And, you know, hopefully, as I said, we kind of can catch you in Melbourne and Brisbane sometime soon. Um, yeah, man. That'd... Yeah. It'd be awesome. <laughs> it's really awesome chatting here and best of luck with everything with old haunts and, you know, all the releases planned for this year. I'm sure we'll have a chat multiple times if you're kind of planning on busting them out. So that's super exciting. Yeah, man. Sounds great. Yeah. Look forward and, to um, it. I suppose until then, the scenes just come out. So for all the listeners that may not have heard it, definitely go check it out. It's an absolute triumph. So thank you so much, Neil, and congratulations. Thank you so much, mate. Pleasure. <laughs>